Hello, welcome to Level Change by Claudio Fonseca. I'm a Rio 777 pilot and today we continue our virtual ground course on this airplane talking about performance calculations. I would like to start explaining to you that between the end of the pre-flight procedure and the beginning of the before start procedure, there are a couple of things that happen on the airplane and on the operation around the airplane that is not covered by the normal procedures. Those things are not covered by the normal procedures because those things uh, they are uh, procedures related to how uh, each company handles everything that is going on from passenger boarding to uh, refilling and cargo loading itself. Also, when we talk about performance calculations, we need to have in mind that some companies, they provide the numbers for the performance to the pilots uh, without any pilot interaction. Some companies, they give the pilot some numbers and they can work and refine these numbers. And some companies, they leave to the pilots to do all the calculations. I like the last one where the pilots will have to calculate, but this also increase the pilots situational awareness around the airplane performance for a very specific phase of the flight that is the takeoff. Okay, so for me, uh, when the pilots are performing these calculations, they have a huge situational awareness and they can uh, understand and even decide what kind of configuration, what kind of speeds and what kind of settings they are going to use uh, for uh, the takeoff itself. Okay, so uh, I want to give you a document. You can uh, take this document as a reference for you uh, to do your performance calculations that we are going to do later on. So, the document is this one, the performance calculations uh, and I tell you that this procedure uh, is done by the captain and also the first officer. I think that's also the best way to do it, okay? So what I'm going to explain here to you is the best way to do in my opinion, but of course each company uh, have different procedures and if you are uh, following a specific company procedure, go to the company manuals and make sure that you are applying all the restrictions uh, that the company wants you to apply okay so what i tell you is that initially uh, you have to calculate your takeoff performance and i tell you as well that each pilot should calculate the takeoff performance why because after calculating the takeoff performance both pilots they can discuss the performance that they just calculate okay and then they adjust the performance so both have the same so they are going to use the one that best suits the operation or mix both as to have one final result to be used okay so you cannot perform this if you did not calculate uh, two performance independently okay and then once you adjusted the performance you want to check the performance to make sure that the numbers they are the same so each pilot calculates then they both discuss then they adjust what they consider to be the best of their performance calculations and then they do a final check to make sure that uh, on both sides on both computers on both EFB on both performance application uh, they have the same results okay uh, then I also tell you that you have to check your all engine takeoff performance and immediate return to land performance. This is something you cannot do on PMDG. Uh, you will have to use uh, other approved source uh, for both cases, which usually is a uh, real life QRH. And then, of course, if you do not have uh, this approved source uh, and if you do not have any performance application that allows you to do uh, this kind of calculations you are going to miss this for your flight but I want you to understand that those uh, situations they basically they cover 
uh, no normal situations. Okay, so for the all engine takeoff performance, I tell you that anytime the compliance with the departure gradient is in doubt, and this can happen because you have high climb gradients, high altitude constraints, high elevation, high temperature, and or high takeoff weight, you have to calculate all engine takeoff performance. Uh, so you want to make sure you can comply, you can reach the restrictions uh, as they are. The other calcu ca calculation is uh, any time uh, the performance in case of an immediate return to departure airport is in doubt, and this is going to happen when you have a short runway, high elevation, high temperature, and or high takeoff weight, you have to calculate landing and route performance uh, to make sure you can come back to that airport basically what you have to understand is if you can take off you can come back the only time this is not going to be true is that if you have uh, a very long takeoff uh displaced uh, sorry a landing displaced threshold okay so if you have a displaced threshold for your landing so then maybe you're using uh, your calculation from the beginning of the runway for takeoff and then maybe the runway can be uh too short for your landing but this is in extreme cases okay because have in mind that for the takeoff you are accelerating from zero knots up to your v1 and at that v1 initiating your uh, reject the takeoff maneuver and you still stop within the runway limits okay so uh, for this uh, to happen uh, for you to not have enough runway for a landing this is going to happen only in very very specific situations and I think that the pilots will be aware of it okay um, um, I will give you one example, maybe runway 31 left in New York in very specific situations can be an issue, but as uh, you will be coming back in an emergency anyway, you can even uh, land and use the runway before uh, the threshold, okay? This is not uh, something that uh, you will be considered during normal operations, but in emergency, if that's uh, the longest runway available and you are in doubt about your performance and you can maintain your visual separation from the obstacles during the approach you can even do that okay so uh, the last step here for the all engine takeoff performance and immediate return to land performance you cannot do it especially if the immediate return to land performance is above your maximum landing weight because pmdg does not allow you to calculate any landing performance above maximum landing weight and also does not give you the option to calculate an overweight landing okay so and one more time if you are below maximum landing weight most probably you will have enough runway to come back anyway okay so i'm talking about situations where you have uh, short runways and high uh, takeoff weights okay so have in mind that these steps here at the bottom you will not be able to complete with the pmdg airplane so far but we are going to calculate uh takeoff performance we are going to calculate two different takeoff performance i'm going to discuss uh which one is the best or what we can do uh as the best result then we adjust both and we check okay so let's go back to our sim at this stage okay and I'm going to uh, give you the situation like this so I'm telling you that both pilots are going to complete this procedure each one on its own uh, iPad or application or EFB so you go to your performance too in this case we are departing Guarulhos. Another thing, have in mind that this is not the initial calculation that we did to calculate our maximum takeoff weight. This is for our actual weight, okay? So basically, what you want, you want to come here to your flight plan. So you have an estimated takeoff weight, in this case, 204.5, and uh, with told we agreed that we were going to use 
1.5 tons of extra fuel during our initial calculation so this number instead of 304.5 is going to go to around 306 okay so that's the performance that you are going to calculate okay so flap optimum rating optimum air conditioning sorry anti-ice configuration is off weight basically 306 tons Take off CG, you can use anything, it doesn't change here on your uh, PMDG. You can even use 7.5 as the uh, most forward CG on the 777-300. Air conditioning auto, and you can port the weather. And this is 080 at 5. So basically, maybe the wind is going to drop, so you can use uh, 0 and you are going to calculate your performance like this so we have the results here let's assume that the fo is also calculating the performance but he's going to do slightly different calculations okay so let's take for uh the fo in this case guarulhos uh, still run with 10 left but in this case uh, he is thinking about an intersection takeoff, so we are not going to use full length. Uh, let's say instead of 3,700 meters, we are going to depart from hotel, 3,400 meters, that's what I want. Also, flap optimum, rating optimum, anti-ice off weight. This guy is going to use 306,500. He wants a margin of 500 kilos in case you have uh, slightly more passenger or bags or cargo at the end of your flight. The CG is also using the most forward because it doesn't change anything. But in this case, he's going to use the current weather, including uh, five knot headwind. Okay, so he calculates, and then uh, they can think about it okay so have in mind that uh, both had 1000 feet acceleration height and flaps 5 okay flaps 5 then uh, what uh, the right side has is an n1 of 102.2 and the rate in takeoff with a select temperature of 36 so we are talking about 101.2 for the n1 and on the left side we have N1 of 97, take off 1 and 33 degrees. Okay, so we have a difference of 4.1% uh, on your N1. Okay, so basically, if we think about the uh, company-wise, company, -wise, company uh, procedure, most probably a uh, lower N1 will be better. Also, a lower N1 not only will uh, reduce your engine maintenance cost, but will also reduce uh, the overall damage that you're going to cause uh, for your engine during this takeoff, okay? Uh, trim 7.25. If we go to the other side here, uh, we're talking about the same trim. And then the speeds, 6, 8, 7, 7, and 8, 2. So 6, 8, 7, 7, and 8, 2. You have slightly lower speeds here, 173, 178, and 181. VRS speed is uh, 167, which matches 306 uh, knots. And on this case, you have uh, 168, which is uh, hopefully for 500 kilograms more, and that's the difference on the weight okay so you have this one knot because it's the difference so now uh, that both compare uh, they are going to discuss or basically we just discuss what uh, we had as result and the difference is be because uh, one pilot uses it full length the other pilot uses it uh, reduced length for an intersection takeoff okay uh, then for the weight one pilot uses the current weight the other pilot use 500 kilos as a margin and for the weather uh, both they use same temperature and QNH but uh, they one use wind as zero and the other one use uh, the current wind which gives them a uh, five not headwind so uh, let's consider the situation again let's talk about the runway length uh, usually here in Guarulhos, uh, the 
airplanes they depart from full length from taxiway hotel which is not full length which is the 300 meters ahead usually only airplanes uh, only narrow bodies depart from there okay so i think the best situation between the two and be and because of the experience that i have here in guarugas maybe is to consider the runway full length so let's go back to the other side and let's change this information because full length is the best for us today okay then about the weight i think the fo side is best because we do have some margin in case uh we have extra cargo or the less passengers are bringing more baggage than anticipated by the company so maybe in this case to go to 306 500 is the best case so we use the runway length from the left side and the weight from the right side and about the wind okay wind zero looks to me that is the best because if the wind drops we are already covering and as long as we do not have tailwind we can take off from runway 10 left with a wind indication of zero okay so we agree that the best indication is to have tell you uh, sorry wind as zero so we are going to do zero slash zero we are going to calculate again and now we are supposed to have the same numbers look n1 slightly higher than the previous one instead of 97.0 97.2 and select temperature slightly lower at 32 instead of 33 so this is good enough uh, this is close to the best that the captain was doing before and gives us uh, a little bit of margin from the previous one so we want to make sure that on the other side we also have a speed the 72 78 and 82 and vref 168 so let's go to the other side let's do the calculation and now we have exactly the same results flap 5 97.2 with takeoff 1 select temperature 32 trim 7.25 v1 172 vr 178 v2 182 vref 3168 for a weight of 306 500 so basically uh, that's uh, the best performance that both pilots agree uh, to use uh, for this flight today okay have in mind that anytime they are away from these numbers when the final information to them related to weight or to the weather or even to uh, the runway length that they are going to use every time they are in doubt they can come here again and recalculate those numbers okay so but basically i think this is the best situation for today of course if you are flying alone on your sim Think about those things uh, before just importing from OFP, importing from OFP and importing the weather or importing from the aircraft if you are already complete your refilling and if you are already complete your uh, passenger and cargo loading. Okay, so uh, make sure you think about the numbers that are coming here, not only importing them uh, and taking them uh, blindly. Okay, so make sure you have the correct information make sure you have everything that you want uh including the weight that is going to be uh, very important for your departure okay of course we are going to check all of this including our vref against the inputs that we are going to perform on the fmc later on during our uh, before start procedures okay so this is the end of the performance calculations this is something that the pilots they will be doing uh, one more time between the end of the pre-flight procedure and before starting the before start procedure so they know more or less how their uh, takeoff is going to be and of course they adjust as they have better information from the company if you like learn something in this video please give us the thumbs up share this with your friends and i see you on next video bye bye